So they line up on the grid then. Keeley on pole position. Troy Causa, the man from pole last year, is in second place. And we come right the way through. The grid is exactly the same as uh, it was for race one. Of course, for race two, Edwards there, the man who finished third in race one, lines up on the second row of the grid. Carl Fogarty comes in as well on the second row of the grid. The grid forms up exactly as it did for race one. I'm glad to say that Keeley and Corsa are both out there. No John Reynolds, no Brian Morris, and no Hodgson, no Yoshikawa. But we have the green flag at the back of the grid. We have red, red lights, green light, nice clean start. And Aaron's, aviates. Aaron's light right up in the end, pushes Corsa, goes Foggy, goes through, Carl Foggy goes through to the lead. Oh, that is incredible. Over the nose goes Keeley. So Keeley once again starts his race right from the front. Keeley then drops as in for race one. Carl Fogarty, though, goes in in a second place. Aaron Slight is back in the melee. Gorza's beside him. Casoli's come through with Fogarty. Casoli's come through. Look at the power of that. So Casoli goes past Fogarty's Honda. But we know from race one that Fogarty's Honda is quicker than Casoli's bike. Can he do anything with it? Gorza is in fourth place. In fifth place, that looks to me like... Gobert. Gobert it is for that Sir Crafar two back from him. Kaczynski's the man between them. Wow, what a start. Sensational stuff here. This is exactly what Carl needed to get away from the pack, get a slip streaming with the front guys. Already Keeley and the top three breaking away. OK, well, we wait to see whether Casoli's going to stitch one on Keeley in a moment. We're at the Oz curve now. That's frightening, this right-hander is. Keeley goes through safely. Causa, though, must flinch when he comes to this one, surely. Causa is now behind Gobert, I think. No, he's not. Gobert is still right in Causa's slipstream. But Gobert going a lot better in this race as well. Casoli looking for a way past. But look at Fogarty. Fogarty pulls out of the slipstream in third and drops back. And look, Gobert's gone through on Corsa. Number four, Gobert. Anthony Gobert Ooh. up on the saddle. He's in front of Corsa. And then there is Kaczynski behind them. Well, what a start, Jules. That's just what Carl needed. He's hidden from your view behind Casoli's number 16. He ducks to the inside, tries to do on the brakes, coming into the sax cup. No, Casoli holds it. This is not what Carl needs because the pack are catching up with him. Yeah. Then by number four, Anthony Gobert, then it's Troy Corsa. Foggy again looks to the inside. No, that's it for this lap, I think, Keith. Oh, you reckon, do you? <laughs> Look at Gobert looking for a way around the outside. That would have been one hell of a move if he'd managed to make that. Well, I, I like the bit where you said the pack have catched him up, caught him up. <laughs> when was that? Well, about a millisecond ago. <laughs> and of course, Gobert had a worse first race than Carl Fogarty did. Anthony finished behind him. So Anthony Gobert, number four, has a lot to race for, beaten out of sight for most of the race by course and his other Australian contemporaries. Here we go, what can they do this time? Over the line then, and into turn one it is. Keeley, Casoli, oh, there's slight under Kaczynski, so slightly making some moves now on lap two. And in his sights is Crapar next up, then it's John Kaczynski, then it's Anthony Gobert. Oh, Corsa now looking as well, bobbing and weaving, so Corsa is on bike two, but it's still seven, Keeley that leads from Casoli on bike 16 in second place, Fogarty in third on bike number one. Slight is making progress, he's gone past Crafar already, Aaron is the man who's making most progress, number three on the second of the Castro Hondas, there he is, no, he's been re-overtaken by the Kawasaki, he has as well, Crafar got him back, that's not going to do Slight any good. Troy Corsa is now really pressing Carl Fogarty. This is what we expect of Hockenheim. Oh, oh yeah, Carl. but look at Casoli. Casoli pulls out the slipstream. It's Casoli around the outside. Well, whatever they did to his bike in the interim has been incredible. Wow. Because that bike was a lot slower than the Honda in race one. But look at it now. Casoli, wow. I've not seen him lead a World Superbike race. I think going back until it was wet somewhere in Assen or Donington. Donington, Keith. He's, he finished third out in the wet one year. I've never seen him actually lead a World Superbike race. Well, I've seen him lead Grand Prix. Well, take a look at it. It's Casoli then leads. Look at that indeed. And up the inside comes Keeley again. Fogarty looking for a way through as well. What a great superbike race this is. Wow, look at them. Ten of them all going for it. Edwards on the back, but it's Keeley who leads again from Casoli. <laughs> and then take a pick out of any of those. Fogarty, <laughs> Fogarty in third with Gobert. Watch for Gobert up the inside on the brakes because Gobert is scary. He's oh. so quick on the brake. Fogarty goes second. Casoli drops back to third. This can't last, surely. This is what we've had at Hockenheim here after here. Look at Gobert. Look at Gobert on the inside. He goes third in front of Casoli. Gobert is unbelievable on the brakes. He is the man from Donington. If you remember seeing him at Donington Park, well, Hockenheim, watch out. Fogarty, second place behind Keeley over the start finish. Gobert lining him up, though, for maybe a go on the brakes. Crafar next along. Casoli, who led three corners ago, is back in fifth. Keeley. Wow. 
pulling out a small lead. Some comfort, but Carl's hard on the brakes behind him, not making an impression. Ducati versus Honda again now in the slipstreaming battle. Through goes Aaron Slight. Aaron Slight's under Casoli as well. Now we look back down in the field. And, well, we Jochen look, Schmidt. Jochen Schmidt is in 14, so Jochen Schmidt is number 14, but Keeley at the front still. Fogarty still second. And then look at the Buddy Kawasaki side by side. Crafar, New Zealander, alongside Govert, Australian. <laughs> Who's it going to be? Well, any man of five the third. Slightly looking for the inside line. He'd be good if he managed to pull that one off from where he is. So, Keeley's getting away very slightly from Fogarty, from Gover on four, from Crafar six, 16 Casoli. Then it's Aaron Slight. Then it's John Kaczynski. No, it's not. It's Gorsa. Then it's John Kaczynski. Yeah, then it's Aaron Ed Edwards. Julian's nearly jumping off the desk here. <laughs> Slight lost the place there when I thought he was going to game off. Only got him. Slight looks the other way. Crafar looks inside Gover. You're joking. Well, he's put him off. He's going now. Whoa. Well, well, luckily the bike didn't tangle up with him, but there are going to be some harsh words back in the Muzzy Kawasaki team about that little number. There's no doubt about it. Crayford, we saw get, getting slightly aggressive at Donington Park, but in those occasions, oh, I don't know what's going to be said there. But Just, oh, oh, and then Crayford gets shoved by Slight. Well, really, Crayford didn't really have the line, did he? Gobert wasn't aware of him being under him until he hit him. And uh, uh, Anthony Gobert, we've ouch. seen in the grass a couple of times, and he's pretty damn good at that, and he was very lucky that that bike didn't tangle with him. So Anthony Gobert hopefully will be OK. Um, but again, another very bruised superbike rider, and he's a big boy to throw in the dirt. You're not kidding. Back so at the bunch now, let's take a look at it. Slight got underneath. There he goes. Slightly at the sax curve, has gone third. He dispensed with Crafar, he dispensed with Casoli, and now it is Aaron Slight in third behind a revitalised current world champion, Carl Fogarty, but still leading them all is Pierre-Francesco Keeley. Well, you wouldn't think that bloke was beaten up by his motorbike just a couple of hours ago, would you, as we look backwards, lower down the pack, looking back at uh, Von Tempe and others there from the back of that Kawasaki. They're just coming out of the stadium sec onto the stadium section, start and finish, into the first right-hander. Meanwhile, back at the front, <laughs> Keeley still leads. Carl is still second, yeah, but, wait but for look. It. There he comes, out of the slipstream. Ooh. Oh, dear me, Carl jumped straight back in his slipstream. So Aaron Slight goes second. Fogarty, though, is right on his tail, and he's going to go back up the inside on the brakes. Ooh. He would be so good if he managed to do that, well, because just... Aaron Slight, we've seen on the brakes, Jochen and he's a bit frightening. Jochen Schmidt up the slip lane. Yep, the local favourite has parked it. I tell you what, we had Masi Kawasaki versus Masi Kawasaki ending in tears last time round. Yeah. And up with Honda Castle versus Honda Castle ending in tears. Well, this is the biggest red flag I think I've ever seen waved in front of Carl Fogarty's eyes. If he sees Aaron Slight there, he is going to want to beat him. And this really could end in tears, Julian. I don't think there's a better word for it at the moment. No, and uh, that's not a surprise. Aaron Slight, fastest lap so far, not on the pace yet of qualifying, or Troy Corsa's fastest lap from the first race. There's Corsa number two, up to fourth place now. The mayhem has settled down a bit, or I don't think Anthony Gobert will have settled down. No, definitely not. Slight goes underneath. Slight goes first. What a move. <laughs> Slight goes first. That's Crafar. Is that Crafar in the pit? No, that was Igor German. There's Crafar number six, still in the pack in front of Colin Edwards, maybe dropping back somewhat shamefacedly, hoping he'll make the, the race last longer before he gets back to his pit. Well, I, I was just about to put uh, oh, Aaron Slight. Carl! Carl Fogarty up the inside, but not. No. But he really is trying very hard. Interesting, 124 miles an hour was the lap average done by Aaron Slight, if you ever wondered how fast they were going. 124 miles an hour is the average for the lap. I love this racetrack. Fast racetrack always produces this sort of battles in all classes, especially in World Superbike. To all you Anoraks out there, Hockenheim fans and so on, on to the last corner on the course. We're on lap four of 14. Lap oh. five of 14 now. It's Aaron Slight that leads from in second place. The battered Pierre Francesco Geely. Then third, Carl Fogarty. Fourth is Kaczynski. Casoli is fifth. Sixth is Corsa. And he's up the inside of Crafar there. Seventh is Crafar. And then eighth is Colin Edwards, the second. And did you see the move Casoli puts on Crafar at the right hand of the start? Nothing finish. would surprise me, Julian, uh, what Casoli does. Scared me from here. Now, Aaron Slight stretching away, taking Keely with him. Fogarty needs to stay with these two. Side by side, oh. Keeley holds him out. This battle is rejoined from race one. Incredible stuff. <laughs> and I wonder how it's going to end <laughs> up this time. Where's your money, Jules? Uh, nowhere yet, Keith. Staying firmly in my pocket at the moment. But watch Kaczynski in fourth place again. This is what he did in the first race. This is like a replay. He's coming up to the leading group. Can yeah, he stay there? Round the outside, but no. Keeley has got it coming into the Oscurve again. This is frighteningly quickness here. It really is unbelievable. 
Remember, that's where we lost Corsa in race one. Corsa this time, well, we know he's bruised uh, and obviously taking the discretionary route for a few championship points, I would say, in this second race. Kaczynski still fourth, Casoli fifth. Let's have a look at uh, Keeley and the Hondas. Well, Carl Fogarty showing here surely must be encouraging. He's obviously decided to come out fighting for this race. And there he is in third. Yeah, that's a bit more like the old Carl that we're used to, shaking his head from side to side. Really very, very aggressive indeed. But he's certainly not going to have it all his own way. Kaczynski's closing in now. Oh, that's a biggie at the chicane. We have some very wrecked motorcycles there. We certainly do. And I couldn't recognise um, well, who they belong to. I think it used to be a Kawasaki, one of them, but I, I couldn't... Uh... So, Keeley and Slight side by side. Fogarty in the big hole behind them, looking for a way past. Is he going to squeeze? Now, that would have been brave. Slight has, though. 190 miles an hour. No, he hasn't. No, yellow flag. There was a yellow flag out there. Kaczynski goes through on Fogarty. Well, what happened about the yellow flag then, Julian? You can talk about the anorak side of that in a moment. <laughs> Thank so, you, Keith. Fogarty is in fourth place. <laughs> oh, Sorry, Jules. That's all right, but I did think I saw a yellow flag there. I stand up against Carl, side by side with Kaczynski. He's going to retake third place, I'm sure. No, it's not Kaczynski in the way as Keeley leads into oh, the Oscar. Me. Into the Oscar, Keeley leading then. Slight now, biding his time, surely. But Kaczynski, again, as in race one, is looking very, very quick indeed. But remember, he faded very slightly. You saw him having some trouble with his ankle after... Well, he's injured, obviously. And it just didn't stay with him, did it, during the course of the whole Here race Here comes Foggy. One. Yes! Oh, oh Slight. now goes Slight. Slight's gone backwards now. Uh, that's another Ducati. That's a power horse Ducati. That, that's Mike Hale. Hale. No, it's, no, it's Corsa. Corsa. Again. Corsa down again. Well, we assumed it was Hale. Hale. There he is. So he stood by the side of the track. Well, he has been flinged right over the fence. So Troy Corsa does the double in the way that we just wouldn't have believed possible. So Troy Corsa out of this race as well. Now we've got the battle. Kaczynski in second place, number 11. Wow, John Kaczynski comes back effectively from the racing dead here. And Keeley leads, Kaczynski second, Fogarty third, Slight goes back to fourth. Then it looks like Crapar, yes it, it is. is, in fifth place. I have to check, because here, if you take your eyes off of it, you've had it. Casoli is still in sixth place. Foggy back in front of his teammate, only in third place. Two Ducatis lead. Carl Fogarty's Honda is third. Alan Slight's Honda is fourth. Then the first of the Kawasaki's. It is Simon Crafer. Wonderful shots as they hammer out into the well, the mile and a quarter straights. Oh dear. That's me. one of the Gavira brothers. Yeah, and they're still picking up bits of bikes out of the uh, out of the barrier. Oh look at this! Keely, Kaczynski, Fogarty, Slight. Incredible. Kaczynski! And that, I think, is going to be that, because Kaczynski, he's one of those characters that once he does it, provided he can put two laps together, I think Kaczynski will just pull out a little bit of a gap. He's looked very, very good here in this second race. Fogarty, though, and Keeley side by side in second place. Oh. Foggy has the edge at the moment. Yep. But don't discount slightly. Don't, don't discount anybody, because Crafar's about to uh, rejoin the fray. And I'll tell you what, John Kaczynski is only second in the World Championship by one point. And of course, the leader is Corsa, who's already out. So Kaczynski, if he stays on his wheels, heading for a, a decent World Championship lead here, I would suggest. Good shout, Julian. That's exactly what's happening, and I'm sure he's aware of it. But in uh, second place still is that number one biker, Fogarty. And behind him, the three bike, his teammate, Aaron Slight. And then Keeley, who must surely be fading through injury, I would suggest, from that first race. No one can take a battering like he did and expect to perform at this level and at this pace, surely, throughout the entire Carl, 14 laps. Carl looks at the inside, but Kaczynski on the brakes is pretty damn awesome. As you remember from Misano, the 250 world champion of 1990, he's won, what, nine 250 Grand Prix, four 500 Grand Prix. He leads a man who's won, what, five four-stroke world titles. And I'll tell you what, he's up for having a go at winning this race today. There's no doubt about it. Carl Fogarty, almost overnight, has been totally transformed and i mean overnight over lunch break i should yes. say really because he's last... transformed from the last couple of hours into a potential race winner again it's incredible stuff there's troy corsa well good to see he can walk back
and down that long straight. Well, the Hondas can stay in the slipstream, maybe. Yeah. No, they can't, because Inskis pulling away. Wow. No uh, team orders as far as the machinery is concerned, because both those bikes look very, very similar, the two Hondas oh, I'm oh, talking oh. about. But Slight now is in front of Fogarty. Fogarty, again, has got to follow his teammate. Oh, and look at him. That's more like Carl Fogarty's aggression. Get himself hanging over the side of the bike, making it work for him, whatever it takes. And you can bet your life that Aaron Slight <laughs> has got it all coming his way from Carl Fogarty, but still leading is the American, John Kaczynski, still only 28 years old. Yep, and, all, and rated as one of the most wonderfully naturally talented riders we've seen in a very long time. Just seems to have that problem in dealing with teams, doesn't yeah, he? Like he's slightly eccentric, I think. He's yeah, the, uh, and nice he, was, way of putting it. he can be such a charming guy as well that he can be Sometimes oh. utterly impossible. Aaron right. had to think about it. Well, he certainly did. I don't know whether it was a think about fencing off Carl Fogarty yes. or passing John Kaczynski. I'll tell you what, it's just what Kaczynski needs. If the two Hondas are concentrating on fighting each other, how's Keeley doing? No, he's dropping off the pace, really. Only just, though. Keeley now dropping back into the uh, arms of Simon Crayfar. But okay. it's Kaczynski who leads and slightly looking outside the slipstream at the moment. But I would have been amazed if he managed to slide up the inside coming into the stadium. But remember, that's where he did it in uh, he's race one. He's curve. going up the inside of the Saks curve. Oh, Aaron Slight. Well, he is just something a bit special this year, isn't he? Unbelievable stuff. So Aaron Slight then seems to have part the part of the track that counts the most weighed up perfectly. Those two corners are the critical two corners as far as a last couple of bend, last lap dash is concerned. And I've got to say that Aaron Slight looks a bit special at both of them. Yeah, did you see how John Kaczynski was sliding the rear end into the sax curving at the back and in the air and going sideways? But every time I keep thinking that Kaczynski is escaping from the Hondas, they come right back up for him again. Here's the big drag out into the woods. So Kaczynski out into the woods with the Aaron Slight right behind him. Steve Parrish. Well, we didn't know whether it could be better, but I think this race is better than the first. As Slight goes through. Are you talking to me now, Keith? Yeah, I think, I, I I think you ought to, because I don't watch half of it. I've not watched, I've been turned away from it. But I'm well, very impressed with Carl at the moment. I have to say, as you say, he's transformed over lunch. and. The, the man is pushing, he can win this race, so let's just sit and watch. Maybe he went for some food in Virginia Ferrari's tent. Yeah, that could be what it was. He but wanted more pasta. Absolutely on the fine, but the same thing that happens always at Hockenheim, just nobody can get away. Oh, can look they? at this, he was on oh. the dirt then. That shows his commitment, Steve Parrish. Thanks very much. I can't hardly wait to get me up, my voice back in here. I've got to say, Carl Fogarty, he was committed then. He was on the white line, and whereas I think earlier on this year he might have just knocked it off very slightly and given best to the others, he is not prepared to today. This is it. This is the absolute sheer mental strength we've come to expect from Carl. He just gets fed up with worrying about the machinery and he rides around any problems he has. And he's through the second as Kaczynski looks up the inside. He can't touch him. That little rub just let Keeley get back in touch. So Pierre Van Dutta, Keeley number seven, back in touch with the leading group. Craig Farr, there he is. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that Kaczynski's allowed himself to slip back into third place. I've got to say that having yes. done all that work, I thought Kaczynski would put a couple of laps on, but he hasn't. He's got to do it all again now. Whether these two have up the pace, we're going to have to wait and see. So, we look back at a slow-mo of Kaczynski possibly having a passing manoeuvre on Carl Fogarty, but of course doesn't. We knew about that. That was a lap ago. Time to get the back breath back. Back we go. This is another in the chicane shot. Slight leads, Fogarty in second place, third is Kaczynski, fourth is number seven, Pierre Francesco Keeley. Look at Fogarty, you can see the determination there on his face. But it is still a battle at the front. There's Slight, we're on lap 10 now of the 14. So Slight has got a bit of a, well, we don't know what happened exactly there, but uh, Certainly, Aaron Slight has now got a bit of a lead on Carl Fogarty in second place. Third is still John Kaczynski. Fourth is still Pierre yeah, Francesco Keeley. We have another is that blow up. Casoli? No, that's the wrong letters for Casoli. That's Florian, Florian Ferracci, the French Ducati rider. Good enough for me, Jules. Looks like a, an engine terminated. Is Meanwhile, it? oh. it's Kaczynski that's back in second. Fogarty goes back to third. So, Carl Fogarty's got it. Oh, look oh, at him. Look at the wick up right behind Kaczynski. And this is round the right hander all the way onto the Os curve. Well, I never raced, Keith, but in my uh, opinion, Carl stopped worrying about what the motorbike's doing. He's just nailing it now. Yeah, but you've got to have confidence to do that. And uh, maybe race one was a little better for Carl Fogarty than we thought it was, because he certainly seems to be back on the pipe now. That is for Archie. Well, we don't really want to see what's going on there because we want to see what's going on here. Oh. Here it is. <laughs> Watch for Kaczynski. Here he comes. Kaczynski and his foggy following through. Yes, yes, he does. 
Fogarty follows Kaczynski through. Great maneuver there from Carl. His race craft is right with him as well. He's right on it. You know, Carl Fogarty could take a win in this second race. And if he and, does, and that could be the changing point. <laughs> I'm touching wood. I'm not a superstitious man, but I'm gripping wood here. There's a few great banners in the crowd. I saw a Carl Fogarty best, best of British beef banner in the uh, crowd. Very uh, particularly apt at the moment, I thought. So no bans on Carl Fogarty winning anything here. Eight. Oh, there's a blown up motorbike. That was the one that uh, we think Ferrari got off of a little earlier. Is he? Yeah, well, it's uh, not really relevant to what's going on, is it? So that was Ferrari. This is the race. Kaczynski is in the lead. Number 11. John Kaczynski leads from Carl Fogarty in second place. Third is Aaron Slight. Fourth is Pierre Francesco Keeley. And you're right, I think Simon Crafar. In all. Oh, Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone. Keeley's gone, definitely. Keeley's bike has gone pop. So, Keeley's bike's gone. This is like a war of attrition. Hey, I've never seen such mechanical mayhem in a superbike race. I wonder if a condition... Oh, Carl leaning on the back of Kaczynski's the catty there. This is a man with all of his confidence to return. The Red Mist well and truly down. Number one, the British double world oh, champion. Oh, look at Carl Fogarty is slightly looking at up. Big hole in the air made for the two bikes in front of him. Fogarty is on a mission. Round the outside now. Oh, if he did that, then I think I'd go home. So, Carl Fogarty there <laughs> at the Oscar. I think that's as much as my nerves could have stood. Absolutely. Kaczynski out wide and Fogarty on a good tight line with the power down early. Will he get out the slipstream? Kaczynski coming down into the chicane. Well, only Fogarty knows. And there's Keeley, the luckless Pierre Francesco Keeley. A great shame for him. No, no justice at all this weekend for Frankie. Never mind. Next time out, it's Monza. He's won there once. Maybe he can win in a month's time at the Italian round. And Aaron Slight is not going to want to see the number one plate in front of him. And he pulls out of Fogarty's slipstream. Fogarty will dive straight back into Slight's slipstream and pulls immediately back out of it. This will tow them both along towards the rear end of John Kaczynski. It's now, though, Aaron Slight in second. And John Kaczynski has not done the escape act we both feared earlier in this race. We thought when the ex-world champion, the ex-Grand Prix world champion, hit the front, well, that'd be it. He'd break away from the brawling pack. But Superbike is not like that as we go close up on Little John and those two ravening Hondas behind him. Lovely shot. Little bit crossed up after the wheelie. And he's still there. And we're still at the Oscar. curve. Seems like this place comes around just so it's quick. It must terrify you, that corner, it really must. 130, 140 miles an hour, and now it is Kaczynski still leading, but Aaron Slight pulls immediately across to the right-hand side of his track, and Fogarty is pulling across the other side and gets the slip team and gets past Slight, I'm sure. So Aaron on the brake, though, at the chicane and goes Ooh. right back under his teammate. Well, these two want to get their act together, really, because otherwise Kaczynski might just win this. Yeah, but they're right on his tail. That's, that's what John wants, doesn't he? The two Hondas getting in each other's way, but he is not escaping. I'm repeating myself, I know, but he is not getting away from them. Slidey on the brakes up the inside. Does he get it? Yes, he does. And Fogarty oh. can't follow through this time. So Carl Fogarty cannot make it through up the inside of Kaczynski unless he manages it just here around the outside, but I doubt it. Well, I we have what. two laps to go virtually. Slight hits the front, short shifts there. You can see him stamping on the gear lever. Slightly has Kaczynski breathing down his neck. He has Fogarty breathing down his neck. And this is a brilliant second race here at Hockenheim. What a great move from Aaron Slight coming into the stadium. He really has got that bit weighed up, Keith, as you say. Riding superbly, the Kiwi, despite the awful haircut. Here he comes, three of them locking a breast. That's Kaczynski 11, Slight is three, one is Fogarty. Aaron looks for the inside here, doesn't make it. John Kaczynski drops the factory Ducati right across his nose into the left-right flick of the second chicane and heads on down for the stadium section. Look at Fogarty, Fogarty now coming up out of the slip of John Kaczynski. They're on the quick part of the course. It's debatable whether he's going to have the power to make it past the Ducati, but the Ducati is pulling out this side off Aaron Slight, but no, not into this first chicane. Well, certainly the Hondas are just a little touch down on power there. There's no doubt about that. Oh, and Slighty gets it weaving away as he asked for the grip from the rear end out towards the Oscar they belt again and this is incredible Look at round Carl. the outside goes Fogarty underneath goes Slight this is into the frightening right hander at the Oscar who's it going to be in the lead Foggy goes second but it's still Kaczynski that leads oh, oh, oh Fogarty so close it's incredible 
Oh, this is one of the greatest races we've seen at World Superbike. It is absolutely the level of skill, the level of, well, the level of scaring me out, Keith, is phenomenal. And still Crayfast not making any impact in fourth place. Can't wait till we get to the stadium section. Slight slides underneath Fogarty again. They're balking each other, these two. Well, they're competitive. There's no doubt about that between each other within the team. But it's going to be Kaczynski. One of them's got to beat. Right, the rundown now towards, as we look how close Carl Fogarty was, and he really was close here. This oh. is so very, very fast. One slight mistake, and they're all in the dirt. Millimetres in it there. Millimetres between the Ducati and the Honda. As much as that, Julian. Well, may have nanometers in it, Keith. That better? That's a new one for me. Back. Here we are. Kaczynski from slight. Kaczynski surely running wide at Saxco. No, he's not. Oh, Aaron. So, right. Now, Will, you know, he wouldn't be able to get past. It's so difficult to get by just now. I'm almost getting my words tangled up here in my teeth, Julian. Has, it's incredible. Has that let Kaczynski escape that sit up and knocking the throttle off from Aaron? Has final. Oh, final lap, up as well. this time. Final lap then. They've got it all to do on this last lap. I reckon it's going to be a battle between the two Hondas for second place now. And really, I'm. Um, because of that, because of that moment, I think that's when Aaron had to knock off. Maybe not, let's fight with him again. What it's am it, I talking about? It's impossible, though, to know what's going to happen on this last lap. Kaczynski's got to get it all right. But look, right in the slipstream is Aaron Slight. And right there still is Carl Fogarty. Out of the slipstream comes Aaron Slight. He drives past, but Foggy's Ooh. Ducati is very quick on this last 200 yards up. Foggy's the, Honda. Foggy then. Is he going to make it no. past Slight? This is where Aaron is just... The Hondas are struggling very slightly in the middle of this chicane here. They can't... Oh, Ooh, dear me. Aaron. Oh, Foggy rigging its neck. Do you see that? He's nearly ripped the handlebars off then. <laughs> Coming down to the... Oh, dear. Uh, are, are the Hondas in touch? Or is that Ducati just got a little too much... Watch right. Foggy. Foggy's been good here all the time. Carl, oh, is he going to go down the outside? Well, this is where he's great building up through this turn. Up to the next straight, down to the chicane. And will he be able to hold it together? You can see him snatching handfuls of throttle there. What an incredible race. He's Less than half a lap to go. Is We're into the slipstream now. Slight's gone by. Will Fogarty go as well? Will Fogarty get by Slight? Oh, now we're in for a battle and a half. It's all going to be down to this last turn. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Host, remember what happened in the first race. Aaron Slight, number three, leads. Carl Fogarty is second. Kaczynski's been pushed back to third. The teammates are side by side. Carl goes for the inside, pushes him out the way. Yes! Fogarty goes. Carl Fogarty the goes through. Curve. Fogarty goes through. The sax curve is next. Will Slight go back for yes. it? Yes, he does. Carl Fogarty knows he's got it. That is going to be Carl Fogarty's Wonderful. race. Wonderful. What an incredible race for Carl Fogarty. The world champion goes through. Is this the time when he's back with us? Is this the time where Carl Fogarty goes to retain his world championship for a third year running? Aaron Schleitz right on his tail, but it's going to be Carl Fogarty sideways on over the line. Takes it to the flag. Fogarty wins in Hockenheim. Kaczynski can only look on. Aaron Schleitz is second. The crowd are absolutely amazed at Fogarty. He wins. This is Carl Fogarty's 36th career superbike win. It is, for me, without doubt, his greatest. If he's won it. <laughs> if he's still not won it, it's one of the greatest races I've ever seen anyway. I love the no, on the fence. No complaints at all either way. I've got to say race. that whether he's run it or not, I think he hasn't won it. <laughs> yes, that nearly makes sense. <laughs> whether he's, now, what I mean is, whether he's won it or not, I think that he thinks he didn't win it on the line. Gotcha. In my, in my view, the body language from Carl Fogarty was not one of celebration, it was one of, uh, I want to kill somebody. He won Fogarty it! Fogarty won it! Whoa. Carl Fogarty is given the win. Well, he takes the win. Julian is vindicated in what he said. Carl Fogarty, I'm sure, will be celebrating now, and so will the rest of the camp. Oh. Aaron Slight second, Kaczynski third, Crayfar fourth, Edwards fifth. Right, let's take a look at it now. This was the point where I still believe Carl Fogarty thought he'd lost the race here. And we wait to see as it comes across the line. Fogarty dragging Aaron Slight over the line. And for the first time this year, the first place trophy for Foggy. Yeah, and the first big smile that we've seen at a Superbike You're race as well. Kidding. Well, Michaela, his wife, is in Hockenheim, obviously. She's going to be absolutely ecstatic with that because he can't have been an easy man to live with the last few weeks. There's no doubt about it. John Kaczynski takes the applause for third place. And now we're going to see a bit of champagne drunk, of course, today's work being over and done with. John looking a little happier with life. Yep. 
Carl carrying his spare tyre in all the right places. And it's the national anthem, so uh, the champagne goes off during the national anthem. That year for me, with having Carl on the team, was going to be a great opportunity for all those things I'd said about Carl and all those things I'd said about the advantage of the Ducati, and now we're on the same bikes. And, and Carl started really poorly, um, and I think he was finding it hard riding the, the four-cylinder motorbike. Um, but he, I remember at the time, he was sitting there in the, in the pit garage, sitting back in the seat like this and looking back across the motorbikes, my two bikes, his two bikes, and you could see along the rear tail sections, his bike was about 10 mil lower at the back. So he stuck the rear ride hood up in the second race and um, it seemed to give him all the confidence in the world because I don't think it made a miracle cure, but just it stopped the, the Honda from wobbling. It used to wobble a bit, so put more weight on the front, stopped it from wobbling and um, he just stayed in the slipstream for the whole race and ended up winning that race, which is a bit disappointing for me, but um, after that we got back to some tighter circuits and we sort of lost sight of Carl for a little while again until we got to the faster ones again.